Hi, it's Mia. A lot of new investors hear about index funds and get confused on how they differ from mutual funds and ETFs. So let's clear up the confusion because if you're going to invest in stocks, you should understand the differences and similarities among the three. I am personally a huge fan of index funds and index ETFs. They have enabled me to build a seven-figure portfolio for retirement with just income from my nine-to-five job. So watch this video to the end to learn more about what they are and why they are so popular among investors today. If you're new to my channel, I make videos on investing and other practical money knowledge to improve your life. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this and don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video helpful. A mutual fund is a professionally managed investment fund that uses money from many investors to buy stocks, bonds, or other securities and assets. Think of it as a bundle of stocks or bonds that has been put together by a professional fund manager instead of an investor picking individual stocks to build their own portfolio. Mutual funds are registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission, which is the federal government agency that oversees the stock market. Mutual funds can be actively managed by a professional fund manager who is paid for their knowledge and expertise to analyze, buy, and sell individual stocks, bonds, or other securities and assets that they believe will give their investors the best return for their money. For this service, the fund can charge the investors a fee, which on average is about 0.62%. Sometimes it's a whole lot more with commission and all sorts of fees. What this means is that when you invest $10,000, the fund manager takes $62 a year. It might not sound like much, but when you add up all the fees and compound it over the years, it can result in thousands of dollars deducted from your nest egg. Mutual funds can also be passively managed, whereby all an investment company has to do is set a computer to track or mirror the performance of a specific index like the S&P 500, and buy all the companies or shares that make up that particular index. The S&P 500 tracks the performance of 500 of the largest publicly traded companies in the U.S. and is often used as a measure of how well the stock market is performing overall. The aim of an index fund is to mirror or replicate the returns of their benchmark indexes. There's an index and an index fund for nearly every market and investment strategy out there. For example, there are index funds that track small, medium, or large-sized companies, also known as small, mid, or large-cap indexes. You can have an index fund that tracks geographical markets. These funds focus on stocks that trade on foreign exchanges or a combination of international exchanges like Europe, Australasia, and the Middle East. You can have funds that focus on consumer goods, technology, or health-related businesses, for example. You can have index funds that track domestic and foreign bonds, commodities, or cash. You can have index funds that track emerging markets or other growing sectors. Because no analysts are needed to research the companies that are added to the fund, the fees in an index fund are much lower than an actively managed fund. On average, the fees for index funds are 0.12%. That means that for every $10,000 that you invest, the fund takes $12 in fees every year. These days, when people use the term mutual fund, they are generally referring to the actively managed funds, even though index funds are also a type of mutual fund. ETFs, which stands for exchange traded funds, are similar to mutual funds in that they are a vehicle to invest in a variety of stocks and or bonds that an investment company has put together for you, but they are structured a little differently. In fact, both an index fund and ETF can track the exact same index, but with an index fund or mutual fund, you are buying and selling shares directly with the fund company. This is why some brokerages would charge you a much higher fee to buy or sell a mutual fund that they don't own in-house, but they don't charge any commission to trade an ETF that they don't own. For example, Vanguard, the brokerage company founded by John Bogo, who created the world's first index fund, charges $20 to buy or sell a mutual fund that is owned by a different brokerage, like a Fidelity mutual fund, for example. Mutual funds are also traded just once a day, based on that day's closing price. This means that when you, an investor, place a purchase order for a mutual fund share during the day, you won't know what the purchase price is until the next day. Some mutual funds may have a minimum amount that you need to invest in in order to buy those funds. For example, with Vanguard, you need to invest a minimum of $3,000 to start buying index funds. But with brokerages like Fidelity and Schwab, there is no minimum amount that you need to start investing. 
One advantage of mutual funds is that you can buy fractional shares, which makes investing easy since you could set up automatic contributions to buy whatever fixed dollar amount you want to invest at each time. ETFs, on the other hand, are like a mutual fund that has been repackaged to be listed on an exchange, hence the name Exchange Traded Fund. Unlike mutual funds, however, the investment company that created the ETF doesn't sell individual shares directly to retail investors. The ETFs are sold to financial institutions, typically large broker-dealers in large blocks, which could be something like 50,000 shares at a time. Broker in turn sells those shares on the national stock exchanges to retail investors like you and me. ETF shares can be bought and sold from your stock brokerage throughout the day just like a stock, not just once a day like mutual funds, so you have greater control over the price that you pay since they are sold at market prices. With an ETF, some brokerages like Vanguard only allow you to buy whole shares. However, there are brokerages out there now like Fidelity and Schwab that give their investors the option to purchase fractional shares. So which is better, an ETF or mutual fund? There's no real clear winner. Some people prefer the flexibility of ETFs since you can buy and sell at any time during the day and control the price that you pay. Additionally, the expense ratio for some ETFs may be sometimes, but not always, lower than their index fund counterpart. Depending on the fund, one may be more tax efficient than the other. Tax efficiency measures how much a fund's annual return is reduced by the taxes investors have to pay on distributions, since mutual funds regularly distribute stock dividends, bond dividends, and capital gains to their shareholders. Investors have to pay taxes on any distributions during the year that they were received. When you're just starting out, Taxes may not seem like a big deal, but as your portfolio grows, the savvy investor will prefer the more tax-efficient fund to minimize the taxes that they owe. Other investors prefer mutual funds, since you can set up automatic investing and dividend reinvestment, which might not be an option with ETFs depending on your brokerage. Since mutual funds are traded just once a day, investors are also less likely to impulsively trade them. I hold both ETFs and mutual funds in my account. How I decide which one to buy is primarily based on the expense ratio at the time that I buy it. I use Vanguard for my brokerage and the expense ratio for Vanguard ETFs are currently running slightly lower than their index fund counterparts. However, if you're just getting into investing and haven't yet established a habit of investing consistently, then I'd highly recommend choosing the option that offers automatic investing and dividend reinvestment. The automatic investing is a very important feature to have to get you into the habit of investing. The only thing worse than paying higher fees is not investing at all. So even though there's a clear difference in how mutual funds and ETFs are structured, when people refer to index funds, they may also be referring to index ETFs, since ETFs can also track the exact same index. Warren Buffett said, most investors, both institutional and individual, will find that the best way to own common stocks is through an index fund that charges minimal fees. Harry Markowitz, Nobel Prize winning economist, said the smart investor just buys and holds a well diversified portfolio using index funds. So why are index funds and index ETFs recommended by the likes of Warren Buffett, Burton McKeel, and Nobel Prize winning economist Harry Markowitz, and why are they so popular among investors today? There are four main reasons. Number one is instant diversification. For individual investors, index tracking funds and ETFs provide substantial diversification without the research, time, effort, and expense required to construct your own custom portfolio of stocks and or bonds. For an investor with only a small amount of savings to invest, it would be very difficult to construct a diverse, broad-based portfolio of individual stocks and or bonds. For example, if you only had $1,000 to begin investing, you would only be able to buy a handful of shares of individual stocks and bonds. But if you purchase index funds or index ETFs, for instance, one that tracks the S&P 500, you would be instantly invested in 500 different companies. Diversification greatly reduces the risk of any one company going out of business and the stock price dropping to zero. When you invest in, say, the total stock market, the chances of the entire stock market crashing to zero dollars is very unlikely. So compared to buying individual stocks, index funds are much lower in risk. Number two, lower fees. Index funds have very low fees and there's even a Fidelity index fund now that has zero fees. The expense ratios for actively managed mutual funds currently average about 
0.62%. By contrast, index tracking mutual funds and ETFs typically feature fees that are a fraction of that. The expense ratio for VTI, Vanguard's total U.S. stock market ETF, is only 0.03%. Over time, low fees can make a huge difference in long-term gain because of the effect on compound interest on the fees. Most investors are unaware of all the types of fees that they're paying. Number three, performance. Index funds are often recommended because of their performance. They are simple but effective and produce higher returns than 80% of actively managed funds over a 20-year period. Investors are essentially paying for professionals to manage their portfolios who aren't producing higher returns. In a study conducted by Financial Research Corporation, what researchers found was that out of all the metrics that they looked at, like the fund's past performance, Morningstar rating, alpha, beta, and expense ratio, it was the fund's expense ratio that was the most reliable predictor of its future performance, with low-cost funds delivering above-average performance relative to the funds in their peer group in all of the periods that they looked at. Number four, they make investing simple. You can hold just three funds in your portfolio and be completely diversified. Here are two examples of portfolios with the three funds, one using index funds and the other using ETFs. This is why, for most investors out there, index funds are the best way to invest in the stock market and why they are often recommended as being the core part of your portfolio. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button below and subscribe to this channel to be notified when I upload my next video.